Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. And in today's video, I wanted to show you how to use Redshift Displacement to create beautiful detailed Redshift materials. So let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. So here we are, we have a basic scene set up and we're gonna start with just a sphere. And then I'm gonna show you a slightly more detailed version of this method. But grab a sphere, add it to your scene and make sure you turn up your segments up a little bit higher, something like 70 or 80. And then change your sphere type from standard to hexahedron. This is gonna give us some more even geometry and this will help when we start displacing this object here. Next thing we need to do is add a material that has displacement inside of it. So let's start with a basic redshift material. Let's open up our uh, material tab here, go to create, go to redshift materials, standard material. From here, you could drag this material directly on your sphere and we're going to add displacement in your material. This is important. Anytime you wanna displace, you gotta make sure that it is turned on in the material itself. So let's open up this material by double clicking on it and it'll open up the material down here in the basic tab. Click on your node editor. Now, don't be too worried about nodes. We're not gonna get uh, too far into them, but you do have to make sure that this displacement button right here is connected to something. It needs to know what you want to displace with. So let's use two nodes. Let's click on this plus up here and type in displacement, D-I-S. And it will show up right here in this menu. Just double click on the displacement node. Let's move that out of the way. And you can navigate with this just with your one, two, three keys, just like you can in 3D space. So I'm just making some room. Let's click on plus again. And in this case, let's use a maxon noise. So I'm just gonna type maxon. There it is, maxon noise. This is going to drive the displacement on this material. Now we're using a maxon noise so that anyone can follow along. But if you have a specific texture that you're trying to use for displacement, just come on up to the plus menu and hit texture and drag out a texture node. And you're gonna wanna use this instead of the maxon noise. And inside the texture node, you just go to path and you click this little file icon and you bring in the image that you want to use for displacement. Other than that, the rest of the tutorial will work the same, either if you're using texture or maxon noise. So let's go ahead and click on out color and go click on the S right here in displacement. And in your inputs, go to texture map. This will connect your noise to the displacement. Second thing is, is click on out and just click it to the displacement. Now your material is all set up and ready to go. But why is this not displacing yet? Well, there's one more step that we need to do to tell Redshift to displace this object. So with your sphere selected, go to tags, go down to your render tags and click on the Redshift object. Click on the Redshift object tab and down here you'll find the geometry tab. Make sure you have this selected and turn on override, turn on tessellation, one more magic button, turn on displacement enabled. Now it's gonna think here and calculate a little bit, but in just a few seconds, you're gonna see the sphere displace. We got a wobbly sphere instead of a perfectly normal sphere, but we're gonna add more detail just like this. So select your maxon noise, and you can see we're just using some basic maxon noise to drive this displacement. Instead of the default noise, click on noise here and go to something like Poxo. Let's try this one. And again, this will take a second to calculate because it's literally displacing geometry. But now take a look at that. This maxon noise is now driving the displacement of the actual geometry of your object. You could see on the edge here, it's actually poking out and punching into the space here. It's not just a bump map. This gives us a ton of power when it comes to realistic materials. So let's head on into our Redshift object here by selecting the tab on the sphere. Let's talk a little bit about some of these settings. By default on the sphere, it's looking pretty good, but if you ever want more detail, you can turn down your minimum edge, edge length to something like two or three. Just keep reducing it until you see the amount of detail that you want in your scene. But remember, every time you add more geometry, it's gonna take slightly longer to calculate. So this is one way to add more detail. The other one is to turn up your maximum subdivisions. And these two are driven together. And we're gonna have other videos that dive deeper into all of these settings here. But just know for now that reduce your minimum edge length or turn up your maximum subdivisions to create more geometry for your displacement to push out into. Okay, 
Now let's talk about the displacement settings. By default, you're gonna have one and one. And this often looks pretty good, but if you want it to displace more or less, you're gonna wanna adjust this second number down here, displacement scale. You could pretty much ignore this maximum displacement unless you're seeing something really weird that some clipping or anything happening, you could turn this up. But I tend to leave that alone and just focus on displacement scale. So if we select it, put something larger in it like five, it's going to calculate all of this geometry. And once it's ready, you're going to see it basically pushes the geometry out further based on that displacement scale number. And so this is really powerful uh, if you want really crazy amount of detail, or you could dial it back to something like 0.4 if you want something a little bit more subtle. So those are the basic settings, but let me show you on something slightly more advanced. I'm gonna go into my layers and just turn off the sphere for a moment and turn on this monster model. So I'm also gonna switch my camera so we could frame up this model a little bit better. Now this character already has a clay material on it from our clay rough material collection at Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And what's great about all of these clay textures is they have displacement already turned on. You don't have to worry about any of the nodes. It's all set up and ready to go. The only thing you have to do with these materials is add the redshift tag and you will get displacement right away. So let's go into our Monster Man model and let's do the same thing. Go to tags go to render tags, redshift object, and here select the tag, go to attributes, select geometry, override, enabled, and one last thing, enable displacement. And once it calculates, you're gonna see the geometry is all set up, ready to go for displacement, and look at all of this awesome detail. And the same settings work inside of the redshift tag. If you want more displacement, just select your displacement scale down here, set it to something higher like two, let it calculate, and the literal displacement will push out further on the model. And these new clay materials and tactile materials have really high resolution displacement maps, so you get this incredible detail, which allows you to zoom in and get a lot of little bumpiness and texture on all of your models. So let's scale this back, make it a little bit more realistic. Maybe let's go 0.7 to make it a little bit more subtle. And once this calculates, let's zoom out one more time to the main camera to see this model in all of its glory and all of its displacement here in Redshift and Cinema 4D. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned. We'll be dropping some more videos here real soon, to show you how to make more beautiful renders in Cinema 4D. Thanks again, and we'll see you in another video really soon. Bye, everybody.